It's where you spend one third of your life, and it's one of the worst things put into many RVs out there. RV mattresses. We're going to talk about how to get a better sleep on this episode of the RV Miles podcast. RV Miles is brought to you by L.L. Bean, your source for warm, cozy styles this fall. For 108 years, L.L. Bean has staked their reputation on making comfortable clothing and gear to help you enjoy the healthy benefits of being outside. From legendary main made boots to layers that are just the right weight to flannel shirts that out cozy all others. Find joy in the tried and true. Visit LLBean.com to find a store or shop now. L.L. Bean, be an outsider. Welcome to episode 174 of the RV Miles podcast. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who, along with our boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, are crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip. Each week, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from travel destinations to gear, industry news, our national parks, and a whole lot more. And we do have some industry news to talk about this week, uh, but we're not doing a whole lot of crisscrossing right now. No, we're glued <laughs> right now to one spot. We are preparing after the holidays to head down to warmer weather down in Texas, probably, we think. We've we better. Some stuff. We booked some stuff. <laughs> we actually booked campgrounds, y'all. We have everything lined up at least until the end of January. So. Well, we're booking uh, lots of campgrounds right now because we're concerned that it's going to be a busy season again next year. I think I, I, I my sense of it is is that weekends are just what's going to be tough yeah you know my sense of it is is that we're kind of piecing some spots together because we have made the decision that we're going to do a lot of our fall in florida and so i'm working backwards which is not how i like to work like i like to work in a straight line january to february to march and right now i'm thinking about october and november of of 2021 that's crazy yeah yeah but as we look at these campsites trying to book out um through the course of the year it is it is very clear that at least right now there's a lot of weekday availability everywhere it's amazing to me just what i was looking at and where i was looking how much was already booked Mm -hmm. yeah if you want to try to book two weeks straight in the campground it's it's tough We're clearly not the only ones thinking about this. Yeah, there is a lot of speculation in the industry that this big boom in RV sales will continue and that more people will be getting on the road here in the future. And we've talked about that quite a bit over the last few weeks, but there is a new piece of news out there that I wanted to let you podcast listeners know about. I wrote an article and I uh, I put a standalone YouTube video out about this as well, but Thor Industries, which is the largest manufacturer of RVs in the world, they own Airstream and Keystone and Jayco and lots of other brands. They released their quarterly earnings report a, a few days ago. And one line in that report really caught my eyes, the fact that they have a $9 billion, that's a billion with a B, $9 billion backlog of RVs yet to be built. That's orders from customers and orders from dealers. and They're working on the ones for customers first, people that have already ordered them. They're working on the most popular layouts and lengths and sizes first. So that's about five Airstreams, right? (laughs) Well. (laughs) (laughs) That's what's currently being made with $9 billion. We don't know how many units that backlog is, but we know that uh, an average RV loan is about $45,000 which would equate that to somewhere around 200,000 units. Now, I'm sure some of those orders are going to be canceled because people are going to say, I'm not waiting a year and a half or whatever it's going to be. Uh, But we have been talking to several people since I put that video out, people that are commenting um, and sending us messages about their experience ordering right now. And particularly with some of the high-end manufacturers, they don't seem to be waiting as long. There's manufacturers that don't put a ton of units out like 
Tiffin. We've heard people say they've put in an order maybe in October and they're expecting delivery in January, February, and they're expecting delivery in January, February, March, that kind of stuff, which seems reasonable and, and normal. But well, I, let's just really quick, if you don't mind, I'm going to jump in. Can you just kind of give an idea of how many brands, just a ballpark, are under Thor's umbrella? You know, I think that's really important to put this into perspective, too, it, because a, we're talking yeah. like six, seven, eight. Oh, uh, it's, it's a dozen to 15 or so. Yeah. Um, so it, when we're talking about a backlog for Thor, we're talking about all of those brands together. Whereas when you're talking about something like Tiffin, you're just talking about that one particular brand. Like, yeah, and I want to be clear that Tiffin isn't a Thor brand. But, no. But, uh, but yeah, it, it, it is different brand by brand. Thor Industries lets most of their companies operate independently, and they all have their own issues. A lot of the issues involved involve backlogs of other parts and materials. RVs are not made entirely from scratch at the manufactory. They have to get the chassis from another vendor. They get the... The, all of the appliances, the front caps, all that, all that sort of stuff. So uh, I think the biggest backlog right now is going to be on Class B vans. I, I've heard up to two years for some because, you know, they're waiting for the van from Mercedes or Ford or Dodge, and then they have to build it out. Um, so there's, and there's a lot that goes into that. Those take some time to build in the first place, where as trailers are built a lot quicker. I think a lot of people out there are going, oh, we know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one big piece of news out there. And you can check out that video over on YouTube. We'll link to it in the description for this podcast as well. Or if you're watching the podcast on YouTube, there's a card somewhere around it's gonna here. It's going to pop up somewhere. I can never remember which corner it comes from. So I'm just going to show you both corners. <laughs> and if you are an audio listener, we do want to remind you that you can watch this podcast on YouTube. It's just Abby and me sitting and looking straight into a camera. But I'm wearing red <laughs> lipstick today in honor of the holidays. So it's too cold to wear my holiday outfits with my fun sayings and all of the wacky stuff. It's just too cold. In fact, you could probably see our breath. That's how cold it is right now. I think it's 34 degrees here, 33 degrees here. And we are outside in the RV Miles Roaming Podcast Studio. And even though we have a little heater going, it's not really cutting it. <laughs> not cutting it. Uh, it. I will say I just walked out and it's about 20 degrees. Is it cutting it? Colder <laughs> outside of the tent right now. My fingers feel different. <laughs> They're very cold. Uh, another piece of news that we did a video about as well uh, comes from another Thor brand, but this isn't an RV brand. The Togo Group and the Togo RV app, which is uh, an app that we love. They've advertised on the show in the past where you can put in checklists about maintenance and um, all the different things that you need to do when you arrive at a campground, all sorts of different checklists. You can put them in the app. There are lots of videos and tutorials about how to maintain and, and use the systems. Campground your RV on locations, there. things to do. I mean, it's kind of like in just this all in one app and they've decided to just take it up to another level. Now. Yeah. they So a while back they integrated road trippers, mm -hmm. which is the, they bought the brand Road Trippers, which is one of our favorite trip planning apps. They integrated that. And Road Trippers implemented turn-by-turn -turn directions last year. And it was kind of clunky, but it it worked. But now they're, they're taking that up a level by putting in RV-specific turn-by-turn directions where you can enter your length, width, and height and get RV-safe mapping on an app, which is great because... There's only other one other app I know that does that really specifically for RVs, and that's the RV Life app, which is integrated with RV Trip Wizard. So there's a little bit of a little bit of competition going <laughs> on here between these two these two app ecosystems. Um, uh, RV Life I know is making some big updates to theirs as well, and the Togo RV app they're not rolling this out until after the holidays, but it's going. There is a paid version of the app, but the the Turn-by-turn -turn navigation, at least in the beta version, is going to be free. So you can check it out. We love our Garmin 890, but it's a $500 device. And for people that don't have that kind of money or don't travel anywhere near enough to justify it, I think a, a good app navigation is worthwhile to look at. 
So. Absolutely. They also did one other piece of news recently that's got a lot of people talking, and that is that they purchased Our Village. Yeah, Our Village is a cool social network that's been around for a, a while for RVers, and we're members. We don't use it a ton. We don't. But we check in where we go. You can check in at the campground you're at or in the local area you are, and there are lots of different groups, kind of like Facebook. With Facebook groups, you you, you find people that have like interests and you can meet up this year. Obviously, the reason we haven't used it much is because you don't really want to meet up with people when you're in a campground during a pandemic. But um, we'll probably use it a little bit more in the future. But now Togo owns it. So one can only assume that they'll be integrating it into the Togo RV app as well. We have a discount uh, for the Togo RV plus membership like i said the app is free so if you want to go download it and check it out please feel free to do so we'll link to it in the description but if you do want to join the togo plus membership it's 40 bucks annually 39.99 and we have 10 dollars off for that first year with the code rv miles 10x we also want to remind you that if you're still looking for a great holiday gift for that RV or outdoor enthusiast we have our 2020 holiday gift guide out it is our biggest one ever. We even did a video on it this year. That's how fancy we got. So if you do want to look it over, we'll put it into the show notes over at rvmiles.com slash 174, or there's going to be another card that pops up right now on YouTube and you can go watch it there. All right, let's take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about sleeping better in your RV. We're going to talk about RV mattresses. That is such a fascinating topic. <laughs> hey, it, it's the one thing that affects us all, right? <laughs> We're nothing but glamorous around here at RV Miles. <laughs> we'll be right back. Fall is here, so it's time to start thinking about prepping for the winter off-season. Whether you own an RV, a travel trailer, or a camper, EmpireCovers.com is here to help protect all your vehicles against Mother Nature. EmpireCovers.com offers high-quality, affordable covers that are engineered to protect. Every cover comes with a free multi-year warranty to guarantee that it remains durable over time. RV Miles listeners can receive free shipping, plus an extra 15% off their entire order. Visit EmpireCovers.com slash RV Miles or use promo code RV Miles at checkout. EmpireCovers.com. Protect what you love. Outdoor enthusiasts of all stripes will enjoy Pelican gear on their adventures. Hard-sided Pelican Elite coolers are all made in America and are available in a wide number of sizes. Get a 20-quart for short day trips, a 50-quart for week-long adventures, or a wheeled 45-quart to keep the fun rolling along. Pelican backs all their hard-sided coolers with a lifetime warranty, too. RV Miles listeners can get a free day venture tumbler when they visit EliteCooler.com slash RV Miles and spend over $100. It's time for the answer to last week's brain teaser, which went like this. Susan needed to go to the store to buy some ingredients to cook with. She started writing them down. Butter, milk, eggs, baking soda, cashews, oranges, vinegar, and lemon juice. What was Susan making? She was either making a really gross cake or she was making a shopping list is and the answer. so many of you <laughs> chimed in on this one. So I felt really proud because I picked this one mm -hmm. from last week. So I was excited to see so many people answering. It. it could be a cake with cashews, oranges, and vinegar and lemon juice, but. Well, you know, it reminded me <laughs> of this recipe I saw for tomato soup cake, which I'm super <laughs> hot on right now. I know you're probably thinking, what? <laughs> there is this woman on Facebook. I adore. She's on other social media platforms too. Her name is Emmy Made, E-M-M-Y-M-A-D-E. She should probably be a fresh tank some week, but she did this recipe about making a tomato soup cake. And I've actually had friends who've tried it and it tastes just like a spice cake or a kind of deconstructed carrot cake. So this just kind of reminded me of how sometimes odd things can end up tasting good together. Sure. Okay. Don't make me a tomato soup cake. Oh, I'm making it. Oh, it is <laughs> happening. You better believe it. <laughs> well, when Abby and I first moved into our school bus conversion that we used to have about four and a half years ago, one of the most difficult things of that build, if... <laughs> One. If you're wondering, <laughs> uh, was on the very last day moving in our mattress into it because we didn't really well plan 
very well out for that. No, well, <laughs> we were just going to use the mattress that we had in the apartment. So we couldn't exactly move it out until we right. were ready to stop sleeping in it and so you know it was, was a nice mattress we spent a lot of money yeah, on it <laughs> i was gonna sleep in that mattress um but that meant that we built all of the bus before we moved the mattress in so the only way that mattress queen size mattress which was on a second floor brownstone walk up was getting into our bus was down those stairs <laughs> And then up the stairs of the natural bus entrance. Well, d- don't forget that it had to drive about 40 miles on the top of our oh minivan gosh. down Lakeshore Drive in <laughs> Chicago first. <laughs> As we took it to Munster, Indiana, or Hammond, <laughs> Hammond, Indiana. Yes. So all that had to happen. And then we had to get it into the bus. And then we're just yanking this thing down all the way to the back of a 38 foot long bus. We are hauling that mattress all the way down to the back of the bus. We've said this before on the podcast. We looked at each other and we were like, the only way this thing is ever coming out of here is if we take a chainsaw to it and we just cut it into pieces because we are never doing that again. (laughs) I mean, we sold the bus with the mattress. (laughs) So when we moved into our trailer that we own now, it had a short queen mattress Mm -hmm. in it as uh, most trailers of our size do and we slept on that mattress for a couple months well you slept on that mattress for about three weeks (laughs) and you decided you hated that mattress so much that you'd go to the hospital and sleep in the hospital for 10 days with with some of the worst sleeping in our lives and when i came out of the hospital and moved back into the trailer we bought a new mattress so that we could be comfortable. We knew we would be spending a lot of time in that bed for the next coming weeks. How it played out was we actually bought a mattress topper first, and we thought that that was going to solve the problem. This was a very, how how thick do you think that mattress was that came with? The mattress that came with it was maybe four inches thick. Yeah, so we bought a four-inch topper thinking that was really going to cut it. And we bought that before we got on the road because we just knew this mattress is crap. It's not going to be good. That didn't cut it. It still felt like we were sleeping on plywood. So I distinctly remember you go off to the hospital. He was in the hospital for 10 days. And I thought I can't bring him home because we did 10 days at the hospital. Then we were two weeks in a hotel. And I remember being, I can't bring Jason home after all of that, and then have him sleeping and spending most of his time on this awful, awful mattress. So we ended up finding one and it came. You were still in that. You were still recovering. You were still at the hotel with the kids. It came. I went and got it at the campground, hauled. I don't know where I found the strength for this mattress, hauled it into the RV. It came compressed, which was great. It came, but as the box was huge, but it was compressed. Then you had to open it and you needed to let it, you needed to give it like 24 hours to kind of just come back up to regular size before sleeping on it. I, I don't know what I was thinking, opening it in the living room. (laughs) Okay. Like before we even talk about how, like where to get a mattress or, you know, we're just kind of jumping all over with this conversation. The biggest piece of information I can say to you is if you get a mattress that is compressed and you need to open it and you need to let it do its thing <laughs> do that on the on open the it on the bed. bed okay like open it on the bed <laughs> take it from me because I opened the thing in the living room again I I don't know what I was thinking and then I had to figure out how to haul it into the bedroom which we do, it's not a walk around in our room okay so there's just two sides and then you're there that's the bed and I I don't, I, there were times when I was doing it where I thought, I I can't do this. I'm not strong enough. I'm not going to be able to haul this thing up here. I don't know where I found the Herculean strength. (laughs) I think it was 80 pounds. I think the package was 80 pounds. Something like that. I just, I do know that for about two or three days, lifting my arms was not an option. (laughs) Well, (laughs) let's talk about what the problem is in the first place and why these mattresses are so terrible. Um, one of the biggest issues is when you go to a lot looking for RVs, there are lots of brands, right? All those brands are competing with each other. 
they're competing with each other with similar floor plans and at similar price points. So they're trying to cut a lot of corners in order to be the cheapest one in your with the most features in the price point that you're looking for. So when they put these RVs together, often they're just considering what you look at with your eyes. You buy with your eyes because you're not going to be sleeping on that bed a night before you buy that RV, right? Uh, and we we found lots of things like that in within the RV, like the, the, all the storage bays that don't have hinges or, um, or they've just drilled a hole for your yeah. handhold. So you stick yeah. a finger in, you lift up a piece of plywood. If you're lucky that it's a full hole. Sometimes they just got like halfway and that, then they're like, that's good enough. Child, that, child size. That's all stuff that they know that is not going to affect the sale. So they, they're able to cut that corner and, and a mattress is is no different. They can put the cheapest mattress possible and they know that you're, you're not, that's not going to affect your buying decision. Now, a lot of you have higher end RVs that they've put decent mattresses in. And sometimes that is, that's a sales point for somebody that has already owned a previous RV. Those yeah. higher end RVs are usually for buyers that have already owned a a starter model, if you will. Yeah. Listen, friends, <laughs> we're giving it away. Okay. It's very clear what price point we entered into with Ranger Gandalf Charlie the second. We're giving it all away here. We did not enter into the price point where they care about a mattress. Yeah. I, and when you, you might think, oh, I'm just can't going to be camping two, three weeks out of the year. I can deal with it. Do you want your vacations to be miserable? <laughs> I don't. I don't. It will not be a good six, seven, or eight hours of sleep. It will be miserable, as it, it was for us, even with that topper. It was like sleeping on the floor. It really yeah. was. So we made the decision to replace our mattress like lots of people do. Uh, there are other options that you have. We started off with the topper, and a lot of people go with the topper. And maybe the topper is something that will get you through if you are, you know, occasionally camping and not full-time like us or traveling many, many weeks out of the year. So toppers are certainly an option and they're super convenient because you can order them from Amazon. You unbox them, they're lightweight. You don't have to worry about adding a lot to your cargo capacity by putting a mattress topper on. They're great for cutting for bunk beds, for instance. Which is what we have done. Yeah, and uh, and we actually replaced our bunk bed mattresses entirely with four inch mattress toppers mm -hmm. that that we've cut to the right size because it's very difficult to find mattresses in the right size for some of these bunk beds. Some of them have like angles cut out of them. It's weird too, because I don't know the actual name of the brand. I just call it the teddy bear brand. Yeah. It's, it's the teddy bear mattress. Lippert oh. components makes them Lippert. Okay. Who makes your trailer frame <laughs> is the company who makes the mattress. Listen, friends at Lippert. Okay. <laughs> your teddy bear mattress should not cost 80 or $90. Look, I've seen that teddy bear mattress. I know what it can do. And I can get a topper for like $30. Yeah. That's way more comfortable. Not as cute. Look, teddy bear is super cute, but it should not be costing me that much money. Well, I think when you go look at the RVs as well, on the master bed, they they usually put a, a comforter and, and stuff. So it, it you know looks like it would when you'd be sleeping it. And then I think they thought for bunk beds, well, we're not going to go through that trouble for those because we don't want to, we don't want to let these people know that it actually is really difficult to put sheets yeah. and, and blankets <laughs> yeah. on a bunk bed in an RV anyway. So we're going to, we're going to make these mattresses that look really soft and comfy that you'll just lay on the mattress and throw a blanket over you. And they, they, you know, they're like, oh, what's, they're, they're fluffy. You go off to slumberland. I mean, the children saw them and they were like, oh, my gosh, I love these. They're so cute. The mattresses are adorable. They are less comfortable than the queen mattress that we had. Yes. In the and our kids actually were already within the short time they had those were complaining about their backs hurting. Little kids. Our 35 pound yeah. kid was like, mama. Yeah. I am not comfortable in my bed. So, <laughs> <laughs> so toppers are one solution. You can you can go through Amazon. Zinnis is a is a favorite brand for a lot of people, and you can cut them to whatever size you need. Just get a bigger one. They cut really easily with scissors. Be careful though, because a lot of them are scented, and that scent is a lot stronger in an RV than it is if in a traditional bedroom. I think. 
We got a scented one. <laughs> it was lavender scented. It took a while to. We can still smell it. <laughs> it's been 18 months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so we highly suggest you check that out. If you don't want to do toppers, the next option, of course, then is going to be buying a mattress. And unfortunately, for most of us, it's not as easy as just going to a mattress store. Some of us have regular mattress sizes in our bedrooms and our RVs, but many of us have RV sizes, which are uh, usually the same width as a standard king or queen mattress, but they're six inches shorter, four to six inches shorter. They're either called a short queen or a short king or an RV king or, or queen. And they're not as easy to come by. You can't just go to your mattress store and, and buy one. So you have some options. You can have them custom made. You can have any size custom made from lots of different mat mattress companies out there that make custom mattresses. Um, or you can, you can order one. And now most of these are either going to be memory foam, latex, which is sort of like memory foam, or they're going to be a hybrid foam and spring. If you want to get a spring mattress, you're going to have to go to one of those mattress manufacturers and have them make one for you or find one that sells a short queen total spring mattress. Um, we tend to not love memory foam mattresses. Mm -hmm. We've tried them and they kind of tend to get hot. Um, and for us, they're just not as comfortable as a spring mattress. I, I, I feel like... For side sleepers, I think we both sleep on our sides yeah. a lot, that springs are, are really helpful. And that's just my totally non-professional opinion on that. <laughs> that's just our sleeping in an RV opinion. <laughs> we have a hybrid mattress. So it is memory and spring. Yeah, and that's what a lot of these mail order mattress companies mm -hmm. are doing now, these these hybrid mattresses, because they can compress them. The, the biggest reason people get these memory foam mattresses, really, is the fact that they can be mail. You know, like the Casper mattress and the the purple mattress, and so you can, they can compress those at the manufacturer and, and mail them easily. They come in a small box and they open up, like Abby talked about earlier. Well, the the hybrid mattresses, which don't have as many springs as a spring mattress, they're a smaller amount of springs and they're encased in the memory foam, can be compressed. They're heavier, um, they're a little bit bigger uh, height wise, but we are so happy with our mattress from Wilderness RV Mattresses. It has been the most comfortable mattress I've ever slept on still in an RV or out of an RV. We got a fantastic price on it, too. I think at the time that I found it, they were having a 50% off sale. And so I felt like we could absolutely justify paying the amount that we paid for it because it was such a good deal. And also because we absolutely needed a mattress, there was no option there. But I was hesitant not being able to test these things out. Like, how was this going to go for us? And I really did kind of do my research and spend a lot of time reading up on this company and other companies as well. And so then once we saw that 50 percent come up, we felt that, you know, we could kind of jump on that. And if it didn't work out, you know, at least we weren't out thousands of dollars. So that would be my next kind of suggestion is that once you do decide that you want to replace the mattress, do spend some time doing some research on the company, reading reviews, finding out what people do and do not like about it. You know, everyone's a different sleeper, but, you know, just don't go into it and be like, oh, this is a great price. I'm going to get that. And then you've got this mattress and you're miserable. Yeah, I want to caution you about some of the full sized memory foam mattresses. There are some that you can cut but generally you cannot you you can really only cut the toppers the full size memory foam mattresses are usually encased in cotton or something like that where you can't just like take some scissors to them and cut them down so if you do order a memory foam mattress you're going to want to order it in an rv size and you can um, one of the options is mattress insider mattress insider that makes uh quality foam mattresses in their luxury model runs under $500. It's firm on one side and softer on the other. So you can flip it over depending on, you know, what you like. And you, if you don't like it, you flip it and you try try the other side. Sleepies makes latex mattresses, which are cool because latex mattresses are a little bit more natural um, and don't have sort of that off gassing that a memory foam mattress has. And that's something to be concerned about. When you open up a memory foam mattress, whether it's foam or a hybrid, 
it's going to off gas and that doesn't bother some people but it does bother others it's a is quite the smell and it takes some time for it to air out so it, it is best to buy one of these before you go on a trip and let it air itself out for a while yeah i think ours was on our bed for about four days or so before we came back from the hotel and moved back into the rv and even after the fourth day there was still a little bit of that smell mixed with the lovely smell of the lavender topper <laughs> Brooklyn. There are a lot of smells. <laughs> Brooklyn Bedding is another brand that makes hybrid mattresses. They make really great hybrid mattresses in RV sizes. They run from about $500 to $1,000. And so RV mattresses can get expensive, but you do get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're spending, again, a third of your life on this thing. So it is, I feel like it's important to, if you're going to spend money somewhere, this is a good spot to to do it. Yeah, I don't quote me on this because it's been 16, 17 months, but I do think that our mattress ended up being about six or six fifty. I remember it being six hundred. Okay. So and we we have the uh Montana hybrid from Wilderness RV mattresses. Yeah, and that was with free shipping, I think, too. Wilderness RV mattresses does have some cheaper and some more expensive models as well. And finally, if you really want a sleep number mattress. That is an option that is available to you. Sleep Number is one of the big brands that does make RV size mattresses. You can order them from Camping World. That is my dream. I want a Sleep Number mattress so bad. I don't like them. But I want them to be, but this is the thing. I want the one where it's like, if I need to raise you up, I need like raise you yeah, up. Yeah, that's a totally different and thing. Then, that's like the frame. like that Right. Makes that's, you, yeah. I'm not just talking about the sleep. Like I want the whole kit yeah. and caboodle. <laughs> I want it all. I want my own individual sleep mattress. I want you to have your own individual sleep mattress. I want to be like that couple in the commercial where it's like, it can even help with snoring. And the woman's like, snoring? Who snores? And the guy's like, exactly. <laughs> so I, that's I what I want us to be. When I've slept on a sleep number bed, I feel like it's like an air mattress with the topper on it. Oh, That's that I is, feel. I feel like I'm floating on clouds. <laughs> I can't wait to get one. So this is what we need to do then. We need to have a, a bed constructed for us where I can have a sleep number on my side. And then you can have whatever it is you need on your side. Can <laughs> you right. imagine? Oh. I, I want to talk about the size again, just for a second. Make sure to consider uh, that length of, of that mattress and, and whether you do need the, the RV size, because some people do put the normal size mattress in and it just let it hang over at the end of their bed a little bit. And, and some RVs are made to fit standard size mattresses, but you can't, some, some do have the ability to just let it hang over or they some, sometimes people put a board in and build a platform to make it a little bit longer. Ours, it was not an option because our mattress ends at the wall in our bedroom. So there is no space. That was not happening. The other thing I want you to consider is the height of the mattress. Remember, we had that four inch mattress and we went up to something that was more like 10, 12 inches. Yeah. Let's just say <laughs> that sometimes I feel like I need to get a running jump. Before. It, <laughs> and I'm tall. I'm five, seven. And it can bring your head closer to whatever cabinet is, <laughs> is over you. So Jason knows that. <laughs> so measure, measure out and make sure that you're going to be comfortable with what you're putting in. And, you know, sometimes there's like an overhang, whatever it might be. Measure all the dimensions and make sure the mattress you're buying is going to fit in the space that you're going to put it in. Uh, there's countless upgrades that we're expected to buy for our RVs. And I think this is one of those ones that will make you the most happy. Yeah, this would be at the very, very top of my list before I did any kind of renovation, painting, yanking out of sofas and putting in different sofas. Uh, absolutely, I would take care of the mattresses all around the RV first because people get cranky when they don't get good sleep. Since we are talking about products, I do want to say we have no affiliation with any of these brands. We were we paid full price for our mattress and we're happy to do so. And uh, and we think you'll be pretty happy with a Wilderness RV mattress. So check them out. They were it was a great buying experience in general. Yeah, just a really tough assembly. Right? <laughs> All right, let's take a break. We'll come back with our Fresh Tank Black Tank segment. Be right back. 
When it comes to RV travel, weather safety is a top priority, which is why the Highway Weather app provides weather forecasts for road trips along every point of your route, adjusted to your time of travel. You can compare forecasts, get recommendations for the best time to head out, get severe weather alerts, add rest stops to long trips, and more. Did I mention all of that is included free in the app? For subscribers, there's a hands-free background feature to automatically alert you to upcoming bad weather. To download the app, visit highwayweather.io today or look for it in your iOS or Android app store. It is time to check the level of our tanks. Abby, what is in your what? What, what? is in your what? I want <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. My herbs. Tangent, tangent time. My 11 herbs. Tangent time. Oh, okay. I, I watched U.S. Marshals the other night, um, which is, you know, the sequel to The Fugitive. And uh, it's one of my favorite movies, except for now I, it's showing its age a little bit because the, the enemy they often refer to as a Chinaman. Oh, and I was like, oh, oh that's, oh, oh that's, ouch. That's not a good look. Oh, 1993. It's anyway. Not a good look, Tommy Lee. Uh, somebody we know tangently I'm, i've met a few times i've played poker with them tracy letts is now a pulitzer prize winning playwright and there's there's this scene like if, if any of you remember this movie there's this scene where there is like this backwoods county sheriff that's trying to explain how they're going to stake out a perimeter and shut down bridges and, and stuff and he is having a real hard time doing it <laughs> and tommy lee jones tells him how to do it he gives him the business well, I didn't realize until now that that man was Tracy Letts way back when. And the reason I'm saying this is the man does an incredible rendition of saying the word what with the, <laughs> with the what. And I, and I know he doesn't talk like that way because I've talked to him on several occasions. But I, that, it was the most brilliant character touch I've ever seen. I love actors. What. So much. Abby, what is in your Black tank. I got to get off my lawn moment today. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay get off. You often have get off your lawn. I moments. got a lot of get off <laughs> my lawn moments. I think somebody asked one time if they could get the extended version of me ranting about something that's probably out there somewhere. <laughs> they just knew that I cut these down quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me? Um, I it just really frustrated as an individual who works pretty much full time in the social media sphere, which I almost hate saying that, but I do. That's a lot of what we do here at RV Miles is social media based. I am becoming increasingly frustrated with how often these platforms are changing, how quickly they're changing something, how soon you get used to one thing and then they completely upend it and they change it all around. And most of the time, I feel like personally, it makes absolutely no sense. It's a change for change because they don't want to seem stale. They don't want to seem like they've been the same look for too long. We're going to make you work now to find the notification button or the post button, or we're going to completely take the menu bar and we're going to shift it from the top and we're going to drop it to the left because somebody told us that was a good idea. I'm like Madeline Kahn in Clue every time they do something where it's like the flames side of my face. It just, I can't handle it. Facebook just has been rolling out no, this huge I think you're, change. <laughs> I think you're more like Grandpa Simpson shaking his fist at the cloud. <laughs> Tonight at seven, local woman hates new Facebook. <laughs> I believe I am justified in the way I feel. And I just, I, it's just that I want to be able to do my job and I don't want to have to learn it every three months all over again. OK, like it's like every time I feel I do feel a little bit like I'm I'm complaining about the new Microsoft Word, like update oh, Microsoft Office 365. Get that out of my face. Like, you know, that's been around for like eight years. I know, now. I know. I'm just saying like <laughs> it feels I, it feels a little bit like that. But, you know, Instagram, Facebook, even YouTube is just gone. They're all doing it all at once. I just I just don't want to. I want to spend as little bit of time on social media as possible in my life as it is. And now I have to spend even more time because I have to go through and I have to figure out why they have moved everything and why they won't let me see certain things anymore. I do understand your pain. Thank you. I appreciate it. It is a legit first world problem. And I am fully here to admit that. 
So get <laughs> off my lawn about it. What is in your fresh tank? So my fresh tank is a company called Persona Vitamins. Now, before I go into it, I do want to say that they reached out to us several months ago and offered to send us some vitamins to test out. These are vitamins that we're taking uh, during the day to start our day, and then we take them again before we go to bed. We have been using them now for about five or six weeks, so we really did give them some time before we decided whether or not we were going to be able to talk about them. And I do want to say that I think that they have been one of the better vitamin supplements, better like health actions that we have taken for ourselves in all of 2020. I've been really, really impressed with them. Well, explain, explain how it works. Explain yeah, the process. So they are a vitamin company. What you do is you're going to go online to their website and then you're going to take this quiz or they're going to ask you a bunch of questions about what are the things that you're looking to improve? You know, we each, I think, in our, did our own course. And I talked a lot about wanting to improve my sleep, wanting to improve my energy level, wanted better digestive health, things like that. You know, things you need when you're like, you know, all of a sudden you wake up and you're 40. And so I did that. And then they put a plan together for me. I take seven different vitamins in the morning and I take six different vitamins before I go to bed at night. I do that every single day. And once you have that, they send them to you and they come in like this really cool box and all the vitamins are inside the box and you just pull one off in the morning. All your vitamins are in there. It says morning. It says your name on it. It's individual it, little packets. Right, a packet little, for each yes. time you take vitamins. And it's like it says, you know, this is my morning packet. And then it says my name. And then it lists everything I'm taking on there so that I'm, I always know. And so I do that. I do that in the morning. And then before I go to about an hour before I go to bed at night, I take my vitamin packet, rip that out of the box. It's got my name. It says nighttime or bedtime on it. And it lists everything again. Persona has a nutritionist on staff, numerous nutritionists on staff that you can talk to for free if you have questions throughout the course of your time with them. So in fact, they check in with you. They email they you do. and call you. And and so when I started taking the vitamin supplements, one of the first things I noticed in the morning was I was getting heartburn. And so I, I emailed the woman that I work with and um, the nutritionist that was assigned to us. And I emailed her and I asked her, I had an answer within 24 hours of what I could do um, to offset that if there was a particular vitamin I needed to pull out or how I could. And within, you know, a few days I had it figured out and I was fine. But just having someone to talk to, especially after you spend that kind of money for vitamin supplements, to have someone to talk to, to continue to work through that with you, I just think is really cool because so much is so not personal these days. And that was... That's probably why they call it persona. Maybe it is. There's only one you. So they're getting my fresh tank this week after us. Again, they sent these to us to try. We've had them for about six weeks. We really appreciated them. We've wanted to move forward. So I wanted a fresh tank it this week. And then they did want to offer anyone who was interested in trying 30% off, which is a huge off for these vitamins. So I'm going to link to it in the show notes. You can go over there if you want to just check it out for yourself. But we've been able to figure out how to have them delivered to us because they come in a monthly packet. And we have been able to figure out throughout our travels how to get our vitamins to us. As we, something we often have a problem with, but we figured it out. Don't send it to a <laughs> campground. Just saying. All right, Jay, what is in your black tank this week? My black tank uh is filled with RV shows that are happening right now. And, you know, I, part of this is the pandemic and like, should we really be doing stuff like that? And that's, that's one thing. But the whole other thing is what are we gaining by having RV shows right now? From the people that I've talked to that have been going to a, a few of the more, more recent smaller RV shows, ain't nothing to look at there. They're bringing lots of used RVs and they're bringing lots of used RVs that they haven't done much to clean up. I, here's a comment from somebody uh, the other day, went to an RV show today, total joke, what few new ones they had and almost criminal 
the beat up, broken, nasty, filthy used RVs they were showing. Zero attempt at fixing highly obvious problems before rolling them out in front of the public. There were pet urine stains on carpet, missing smoke detectors, blinds falling off walls, light fixtures literally hanging from ceilings. Appalling they can sell items in these conditions. I, you know, I, I feel like that this is this might be an exception to the rule, but some people don't believe me when I say this. Inventory is very, very low right now. You may drive by a lot of RVs and you, you see an RV dealership that their lot looks pretty full. If you go there and you go looking for RVs there, you're going to find a lot of those are already spoken for. A lot of those are waiting on parts because they're spoken for and they're waiting to, you know, put something in them. And you go on a lot and you'll see they start turning them sideways instead of parking them next to each other. They put more space in between them than they did before. Trust me when I say inventories are very, very low right now. Dealerships are getting some back in stock. So there are some to shop for, but I don't understand the expense of having an RV show, hauling all, all these RVs to it. it. takes several days to get all these RVs down to the Tampa RV show, for instance, which is going to happen in January, even without some major retailers going to it. I don't think you're going to get the benefits this year that you often would have in the past uh, in, in prices at RV shows. Often you can get a good deal at an RV show. There just aren't a lot of good deals to go around right now. So my black tank, guys, I think it's just silly that we're wasting money having RV shows, not to mention the health and safety part of it that I, grosses me out. So yeah, for, for I, sure. I, I'm already grossed out by touring RVs behind hundreds of other people mm, without yeah. a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> On a good day, that's not for you. <laughs> All right. What is in your fresh tank this week? Uh, my fresh tank is everything that Disney just announced. Holy cow. Disney just had their investor day and they announced all the new stuff that is coming to Disney Plus and all the new films from, from Pixar and Disney Animation Studios. And why this, why I'm bringing this up is it, it, it is just absolutely not so the stuff that they are choosing to remake and i i know a lot of people including abby and i'm, I'm even like this sometimes it's like really hate the remake mentality in hollywood right now yeah but some of the stuff that they're remaking okay I, <laughs> I, before you get into this y'all can i just say as this was happening because they're live <laughs> tweeting it okay I'm trying to like make dinner. I think I was trying to actually work and do things. I have got Jason Epperson with his computer open. He's on Twitter. He's he's refresh, refresh, refresh. And he is his mind is being blown. He just keeps yelling up. Oh, man, Mighty Ducks, Emilio Estevez. They're making another Mighty Ducks with Emilio Estevez. What? That man hasn't done a movie in years. Look, I, they need Chip. to be remaking Men at Work, okay? <laughs> like Turner and Hooch. A new Willow movie starring Warwick Davis. Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers with Andy Samberg and what John Mulaney. That? Three Men and a Baby with Zac Efron. <laughs> I got uh, Hocus Pocus 2, Sister Act 3, a Pinocchio starring Tom Hanks, directed by Robert Zemeckis. This is the stuff of this is the stuff of my dreams. So, plus 10 new 10 Disney Plus Star Wars series. Okay. Everything ten. you just listed is so I'm not interested in it <laughs> at all. It's how I feel about all of the Broadway musicals that are remakes of movies and the jukebox musicals and all that stuff. I'm just not interested in it. What I am here for on so many levels is Ahsoka, Obi-Wan, the Rogue One spinoff with the guy's name that I can't ever, Cassian, <laughs> I think. I mean, just... The amount of Star Wars that is coming to us that's original content. Yeah. That's not like some vomited, regurgitated thing with Zac Efron. I'm <laughs> so here for. I will say this. How Hayden Christensen managed to worm his way back into the Star Wars universe. Talk about having nine lives. Nine lives on that guy. All right. Here's the best thing, though. This, this will bring this back to somewhat related okay. to, to RV and outdoors content, right? Okay. They're doing the national, 
you know, Disney owns National Geographic, right? The National Geographic is doing a series of, of shows based on the natural world and exploring our planet with Will Smith. Okay. And it is entitled <laughs> Welcome to Earth. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's like it's the best title ever. Will Smith's famous line from Independence Day. So Welcome good. to Earth. It's so good. <laughs> I, the amount of streaming content that is coming, I just think really speaks to what we're going to see from the entertainment industry moving forward. I don't see how movie theaters bounce back. So I'm telling you right now, get that Black Widow up on Disney Plus. I'm tired of waiting for it. <laughs> and if Jason doesn't get Top Gun 2, like in the next few months, <laughs> there I cannot be responsible. Okay. I Just, need that movie. You do. I'm so tired of listening to you talk about when are they going to put Top Gun 2 out? <laughs> so I think at this point, it's this is the wave of like. This is the future of entertainment. This is and the way. This is the way. And Disney is leading it just by what they announced two nights ago. All right. Let's finish this episode off with the, with the nail in the coffin or with a, <laughs> with a brain teaser. What word starts with an E, ends with an E, and only has one letter in it? We'll have the answer to that and a whole lot more on next week's episode of the RV Miles podcast. Yes, we will. And if you are enjoying this podcast and you too are excited about everything coming to Disney Plus, please go over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five star review. That just helps put RV Miles in front of a whole new group of listeners. Also, as we remind you every single week, RV Miles is all across social media and we would absolutely love to connect with you. One of the best things about our job is getting to talk to all of you out there in the RV community. So please come join us over at the RV Miles Facebook group. You can find us on Instagram. We're over on YouTube. We would just love to chat with you. If you have suggestions for a future topic or you have any comments about today's show, you can email us at editor at rvmiles.com or just pop over to YouTube and you can leave a comment there in this description for episode 174. Until next week, thank you so much for watching. Please be safe. Please wear a mask and keep logging those RV miles. Everybody. You just about punched me in the face. <laughs> I'm waving. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. <laughs>